Hey, best friends, Stephanie here. Um, today we are going to be doing a whip and chat. If you don't know what a whip and chat is, uh, whip stands for work in progress. So either you can pull out your kit and work alongside me, or like I do a lot listening in the car while you're driving, um, or do chores, empty your dishwasher, do some laundry, whatever. Um, it's entirely up to you. And then we're just going to chat for a little bit. Um, so welcome to the lazy river. Come join me. Hop in. The water's warm. All right, guys. Um, let me just preface sorry i'm checking which end has wax in it let me just preface this by saying this whip and chat is going to be kind of heavy possibly um i meant to do this earlier today i've been meaning to do this for a couple of weeks actually but um yeah i'm feeling kind of nervous about getting into all of this heavy stuff um about my emotional exhaustion that I'll probably feel at the end of it and also about whether you guys would enjoy listening to this um but I feel like it's important Aiden's a big part of our family um he's been wanting his own YouTube channel and we've discussed it before and told him that he just isn't mature enough right now to have a YouTube channel. Um, and recently he asked again, and he has shown a lot of maturity the last couple of months or so. Um, but we'll get into why I'm uncomfortable with him having his own channel. But we did talk to him about him doing a Q&A with us on this channel, where we will do the uno cards like we did an hour so they'll be skip and reverse in his um so he can either just skip a question if he doesn't want to answer it or he can reverse it on us and matt and i would have to answer it um but before we do that i just wanted to give you guys some background on aiden and who he is just in case he refers to anything in that video um so that way you can understand him a little better Today is Mother's Day, so I figured it would be a great day to do it and reflect on the past 13 years as a mother, even though there's been a lot of rough times. I'm sure all of you can relate, even if you haven't been through the same issues as us. Um, but yeah, it's now after 9 p.m. and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to try to do this and see how it goes. And if it gets too heavy or I don't feel like talking about it anymore then, you know, this doesn't have to get posted. Um, also, forewarning, there might be a lot covered. And once I start talking, I sometimes can't stop myself. So there may be multiple parts of this because I don't want it to go an hour and a half like my Q&A with Matt. I'd like to keep our max if possible. So if there's more to discuss, then there might be a part two about Aiden. Um if you're not interested, if you don't think that you mentally want to talk about or hear about it, um, it's fine. You can just skip the video. You don't have to watch it. Just please, when Aiden does his q and I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys this, but please be kind. Um, and most of you are, so I know I shouldn't be worried, but I'm still a little worried. Um, so anyway, how are you guys? How was your Mother's Day? please let me know what you guys got up to if you did anything fun with your family if you just diamond painted all day um i diamond painted for a few hours in the morning with while i drank my coffee and then i did some chores did some laundry um made a late lunch slash early dinner did a little bit more laundry and then just came back and diamond painted the rest of the day yesterday we went out to eat um, because Matt was worried that the place that we were going to go might be too busy if we went today. So we went yesterday and we were planning on spending time with Aiden when we got back, but he decided he just wanted to do his own thing. Um, I was hoping that he would ask today, but he didn't. So 
yeah, we all kind of did our own things. Um, Matt's been busy in the garage a lot, but he did finish up pretty early and he did make some time for us yesterday. Um, so it's been a normal weekend. So we're going now to get into it. I guess the place I would start is how he came about in the first place. Um, so I was having a lot of health issues, a lot of abdominal pain and couldn't get any answers for a while. And I talked to my neighbor and she said it sounded like I might have endometriosis because she also had endometriosis. And she recommended that I go to her gynecologist because he had been really great with her. So I went to her gynecologist and he agreed that it sounded like I could possibly have endometriosis. Um, he explained to me what that was, ways that it can be treated, things like that. Um, oh, actually, how dare I do this? Okay, uh, if anyone wants to know what I'm using today or working on, this is Florally from Crafties. The tray is a hollow butterfly tray from Shiny Shaza on Etsy. Pen is from none other than Lazy River. And the colors just matched so perfectly with this kit with the skin tone and the pinks and purples in it. Um, and I'm using Patty Wax. This kit is for two different events that are happening right now. The first one is Butterflies with Diamonds because as you see, she's got a butterfly here in her hair. And also... Um, purple dp for lupus i believe is the hashtag if it's not then matt will hopefully add it here not in the description but right there um cover minder is also a butterfly from diamond painting camper paula who is one of the hosts for the lupus event she informed me that butterfly is also a symbol for lupus so i thought it was great that i could incorporate everything together in one um so anyway back to the story um so he agreed that i might have it he told me different treatment options and stuff like that and he had mentioned that Pregnancy is actually a way to treat endometriosis. Um, and I kind of just like filed that away. That wasn't in our plans to have a baby quite yet. Um, I was 21. We had only been married a little over a year. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, that's weird, but cool. And kind of just left that alone. Um, but then he scheduled me for an endoscopy or laparoscopy whatever, um, to go in and see if there was any endometriosis. And if he found any, then they would laser it off. Um, but in the meantime, while I was waiting for that surgery, I did research at home and came across articles that were saying like women who have endometriosis have a 70% chance of having fertility issues. Um, and then after that, if you do get pregnant, there's a 50% chance that you wouldn't be able to carry to full term. Um, and those stats made me really nervous because I always wanted to be a mom. Um, I wanted to have more than one kid. I wanted to have one of each. Um, I need to stop saying um so much. Anyway, I wanted to have one of each, but... Seeing that if I waited and it was endometriosis that I might decide I'm ready and at that point it's too late kind of freaked me out. So I talked to Matt about it and he was not convinced at first. Um, but eventually he agreed because we wanted to be parents at some point in our lives and it was kind of it felt like a now or never kind of a thing at least to me being the anxious person that I am so uh we started trying and within the first month I actually got pregnant I found out I was pregnant like two days before I was supposed to go in for the surgery so I had to actually call 
the gynecologist and tell them that I was pregnant. They had me come in for a blood test. And they're like, well, never mind that on the surgery. Um, so surgery was canceled. Unfortunately, that doctor um, only practiced gynecology. He was an obstetrician, but he had been working for a long time. He had a pretty big family, um, lots of kids, and hadn't spent much time with them. So he decided to stop practicing obstetrics and having to be on call for when women went on in labor and stuff like that. Um, so I had to find a different doctor again. Um, so yeah, I was pregnant. My entire pregnancy sucked. I was sick the entire time. Uh, there was no morning sickness. It was all day and all night sickness the entire nine months. Um, when I was about 28 weeks or so, I wasn't feeling right and went to the hospital to get checked because I felt some cramping. Um, they admitted me. They did a test. I guess there's a test that they can do to detect if there's certain hormones present that indicate you're going to go into labor within the next 24 hours. And they're like, we don't know if the doctor is going to want this because um, he hadn't called back, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. And then if he wants it sent to the lab, then we'll send it right away. Um, he decided not to send it out. They decided to send me home. I went home and the next night, um, I woke up in excruciating pain, mainly in my back. Um, I was in bed on my hands and knees rocking back and forth, sobbing into my pillow so I wouldn't wake up Matt. Um, eventually he woke up and we went to the hospital and I apparently was going into labor at 28 weeks. Um, they didn't see any when they did scans, but they think I had kidney stones. Um, but I was dilating and everything, so they had to give me medication to stop the contractions. Um, and I stayed on that medication for, I want to say, like, eight weeks. And I was put on bed rest. So after three days of, oh, and the pain that I was in was awful. They gave me, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it was Dilaudid or Hydromorphone. Um, that stuff was crazy. I slept like the entire time. I was having weird dreams about houses made out of cake and all the cars were red and they were strawberries with little cutouts for the windows and windshield and giant hands were coming and picking up the strawberry car and dunking them in big swimming pools of melted chocolate. It was, <laughs> it was kind of a blast. Honestly, I was a little bit high and it was funny. Um, but I was put on bed rest for a while. I think when I was 36 weeks, they had me stop taking the medication because they're like, at this point, it would be okay if you went into labor. So they had me stop the medication and just put me on pretty much house arrest. So I could like get up and walk around the house and do chores. Um, but I couldn't really like get in the car because they said the movement of getting in and out of the car isn't great and could cause me to go into labor early again. So the only time I was allowed to leave the house was to go to my doctor appointments. Um, so I figured once they took me off of that medication, actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, when I was on that medication, I looked it up because technically this medication that they gave me was being used off label. It's technically, it's called Procardia. And it's technically a heart medication, um, but they use it off label to stop contractions. I was looking at looking it up to see like side effects and stuff like that. And at first I didn't find anything, but throughout, you know, weeks of being trapped in my bed and not able to do anything and diamond painting wasn't even a thought at that point. Uh, this was in 2007. Um, So 
I would repeatedly like try to look and see if there was any new information. And I remember at one point coming across an article where they were finding that pregnant rats that were given that medication because of preterm labor, um, they were finding heart defects in the baby rat when it was born. I don't know. <laughs> um, so that freaked me out. I called the doctor's office because I was like, I don't think I'm comfortable being on this medication. And, you know, they told me the whole, well, you know, the benefits outweigh the risks and all that stuff. So I was really happy when it was time to come off. And I figured once I came off of the medication that I would immediately go into labor since I was trying to go at 28 weeks. No, nope. um, 40 weeks came and went. He was still not there. I had a doctor's appointment two days after my due date and... They did something called stripping the membranes. Um, I don't know if everyone is familiar with that, but it's pretty much when they run their finger around your uterus and kind of lift the placenta up. Kind of like, I don't know, I don't want to say detach because it's not detached, but they kind of lift it up so that it'll drop back down and sometimes the weight back on will cause you to go into labor. So the doctor did that and went about the day with my mom. And that afternoon, um, it was about 3, 3.30. We had to go pick up my sister and I'm like, I really feel like I have to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and they do not tell you how much about the mucus plug. No one ever told me about the mucus plug. So when that happened, I freaked out and I called and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. There's a whole bunch of blood, like something's wrong. And they were like, nope, just, you know, everything's fine. Just call us when the contractions are five minutes apart. So it was time. Uh, my sister was, uh, 2007, she was 11 at the time. Um... And it was really cute because she put on my mom's apron and had the phone in her pocket in the apron and had grabbed a stopwatch. Uh, Matt was at work at the time he was working for this like electronics store. Um, and construction, the contraction started and it was like 15 minutes apart. And I'm like, okay, you know, we still have time. They jumped and I had called Matt when it started and I'm like, Hey, you know, I think I'm in labor. You know, the contractions are still 15 minutes apart. So we have some, a little bit of time. Oh no, it was 30 at first. And I'm like, we still have a little bit of time, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because he worked quite a bit away from my mom's house where he would either have to pick me up or we meet at the hospital. Um, but yeah, they jumped like they were 30 minutes when I called him. And then the next few were like 15 minutes apart. And then the next few were like 12 minutes apart. And then the next few were like nine minutes apart. And then I called Matt and I'm like, you need to go home and get our bag. Like we got to go. Um, by the time he got to my mom's house, they were five minutes apart. By the time we got to the hospital, they were like three minutes apart. And this was all, like we got to the hospital at 6.30. Um, so this was within three hours. And part of me, like it wasn't that painful at the time. You're going to hear my labor story too. <laughs> I'll try to speed through it. It wasn't that painful to me. So I was convinced that it was like Braxton Hicks. I wasn't really in labor and they were going to send me home. Um, but we got in there and she checked me and I was already seven to eight centimeters dilated. And she told me like, if you want the drugs, you need to tell us now, because if you wait at all, it's going to be too late. Um, and I'm like, is this the worst that it's going to feel? Is he going to be drowsy after? And she said he would be drowsy. So I was like, I can handle this. I don't need it. Um, 
He was born a little after 10. Um, at the time, everything was great. Uh, the only problem that we had was his, he had a hard time regulating his body temperature. So they put him under the lamp for a little while and it was maybe an hour and then he was fine. Temperature stayed good. Um, so, you know, we were in a bubble. I felt such a natural high from the hormones and stuff. Like I was so excited. And while I was in labor, I was so excited. Like to me, every contraction was one step closer to finally meeting him. Um, so in between contractions, I was like bouncing around on the little ball that they give you and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having a grand old time. They actually had a whole bunch of students come in to observe and they've like, we've seen quite a few labors and we've never seen anyone in labor like you. Um, they were all like stunned because I was so excited. Um, so yeah, he was born. Everything was great. Um, as far as circumcision, there's a reason I'm telling you this. Um, I didn't have any particular feelings either way. I feel like as a woman, it wasn't my place to make a decision about that because I don't have that body part. Um, so I kind of left it up to Matt and Matt had said that he thought Aiden should be. Um, and the main reason these are coming out so crooked. The main reason that he thought so was, you know, as Aiden got a little bit older and started to understand some things, if Aiden had seen his and Aiden wasn't circumcised, then he'd be like, well, why does mine look different? And think something was wrong. So Matt made the decision and I just went along with it. Um, so the next morning after he was born, the doctor took him to do the circumcision and actually it was on the next morning. He was born on Thursday and this was on Saturday because we were going to be released. Um, so they took him to do the circumcision and he was gone for a while. Um, they brought him back and after a little while, um, we went to change his diaper because he had pooped and it was an explosion. If you're a mom, you know what those poops are within the first couple days. Um, so we went to change his diaper, but the problem was that even though it was an explosion, most of that was blood. Um, so we called the nurse and we're like, hey, like he's bleeding like crazy. Oh, wait, no. They went to remove the gauze. Yes, they went to go remove the gauze so that we could go home. And he was bleeding. So they were like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take a diaper that's closed up and pack it inside his diaper to kind of clot. Um, and then we'll come back and check on him in like 10 minutes. Well, 10 minutes came and went. No one went to check on him. And then we realized that he had poop. So we went to go change him. And that's when we saw the massive amount of blood in the diaper. So we called the nurse and they took him away. Um, and he was gone for what felt like hours. I don't know if it was actually hours, but it was a long time. And I remember hearing what sounded, what, what I remember hearing a baby crying and it sounded like him. And I could hear it far away down the hall. And I went to the bathroom and had a panic attack because I didn't know if it was him. And I'm like, he could be down there dying. I have no idea what's happening. Like, no one's telling me anything. He lost so much blood for such a tiny little person. So eventually they bring him back. Um, and they're like, everything's fine. Apparently when... You know, we clamped to do the circumcision. The clamp wasn't tight enough. So that's why um, he didn't clot as fast as normal. 
Um, but everything's good now. You're free to go. So we went home. Um, wow, I'm already 24 minutes in and I haven't even gotten to anything. So we went home um, and the first few days was crazy. Um, I've never dealt with baby boy bits before, so I had no idea what I was doing. Plus there was the whole belly button that you had to keep dry and all that. Um, and because he was circumcised, there was extra care that went into that. Um, every time we changed his diaper, he would scream. And it was to the point where Matt wouldn't change his diaper. My mom wouldn't change his diaper. Like nobody wanted to touch him because he would scream. So it was always me changing his diaper. I had uh, ended up having a little bit of mommy blues. Not enough that I went to seek medical treatment or got on any medication or anything, but I remember crying quite a few times because he would scream like he was in pain every time I changed his diaper. Well, then all of these blisters started popping up. Um, so we called the doctor and took him in, and it turned out that either because of the poop and the blood mixture in the diaper or when they went to go take care of him when he had bled so much um someone didn't sanitize or wash their hands properly I'm not sure but he ended up with a staph infection all around his groin and on his lower belly so we had to keep an eye on that and for a few days later, he still screamed and cried every time I changed his diaper. And it had taken me a few days to realize that the wipes that we had set up way ahead of time were probably not unscented. They were probably fragranced and it was burning him. And that's why he screamed so much every time we changed him. And then that fed the baby blues even more because I was a terrible mother. How could I not realize that I was causing him pain? Um, I had tried to breastfeed him and they were great at first at the hospital. Um, they came in, they had someone show me how to do it. You know, we got him to latch on and he would immediately fall asleep. And I was having trouble after they showed me how to do it. And nobody ever came back to help me. Um, and he wasn't eating as soon, I swear, as soon as he latched, he would just pass out asleep and not suck at all. Um, and I'm like, he's not eating. Like, there's no way he's getting any food. And... The nurses were pretty quick to be like, okay, let's just use some formula. Um, so we gave him formula. So I felt like a failure there as well. Um, I never, with the whole thing with the staph infection, it never occurred to me to pump and then give it to him in a bottle. Same thing as having the formula. Um, that way you're getting... The breast milk but you're drinking it the same way you're not falling asleep um it didn't occur to me until much later and by then it was too late because i had dried up but i was thinking about how i was failing as a mom in so many ways um so there was that debacle and then when aiden was about nine days old uh, matt and i were in bed with him watching television well, obviously, Eden wasn't watching television, but I had him just, I was sitting upright in bed and he was up against my chest sleeping. And out of nowhere, his body started seizing. Um, and I freaked out. And I kind of just like grabbed, laid him down in front of me in between my legs. And I'm like, Aiden, Aiden, Aiden. And he's just seizing. Um, I feel like it was... A minute at least. Matt said it was more like 30 seconds. I don't know. Just time kind of stopped. Um, but then I remember Matt taking him. And Matt was like shaking him. Trying to 
get him to wake up and stop shaking. And I'm like, no, no, don't do that because I was afraid of shaken baby syndrome. Um, so I'm like, no, no, don't shake him, don't shake him. And eventually he came out of it and I remember he opened his eyes and then his eyes just rolled into the back of his head and he went back to sleep. Obviously, I'm freaked out. So I'm like, we're getting everything packed. We're on the go. I'm calling the pediatrician on the way to the hospital. So I called. It was the answering service because it was a Saturday. Um, and when they called back, they said, no, you can't take him to any of the hospitals in the area because they're not equipped to deal with children. Um, there's an urgent care, a pediatric urgent care place like an hour away. Um, so they're like, you need to take him there. So we start heading that way. We hit every single red light on the way. Um, I tried to feed Aiden. He projectile vomited across the back seat of the car. Give me a second, I'm gonna drink. Okay, so he projectile vomited across the back seat of the car. Um, we got to the urgent care two minutes before they were closing and I felt awful and I'm like I am so sorry um I know you guys want to go home I'm so sorry you know they told us to come here we didn't know what time you closed and I, I remember the lady saying like don't even worry about it like what you're going through is an actual emergency we have people who come in at the last minute because their kid is sniffling so they did what they could. Pretty much they just did some blood work. Um, and tested his electrolytes, which were in normal range. So they couldn't find anything. And they told us that they couldn't find anything. And that we needed to go down to the children's hospital, which was about another 45 minutes away. Okay. Sorry if it's choppy. I keep coughing and having to stop to drink water. Um, I don't know how you guys do these long ones. Oh, anyway, so we had to go to the children's hospital, which was another 45 minutes away. Um, we got to the children's hospital and they wanted to do a bunch of tests. And I remember they wanted to do a spinal tap on him and I couldn't do it. I couldn't be in there and see that. Um, so Matt stepped up and he went in the room while they did the spinal tap on this tiny six pound baby. Um, so they took us up to a room and, you know, we didn't have any information, but they were going to connect him to the EEG machine where his head is gauzed up and there's wires attached they're just watching his brain activity um and i remember we were up in the room matt says it was still all we were down in the er area so i might be wrong but i remember somebody coming in and asking has the cardiologist been in to talk to you yet and i'm like uh, no, we're here because of a seizure. And she's like, oh, uh, okay, someone will be in to talk to you soon. And just scattered away. Um, so I was really confused. Wasn't feeling really sure about this hospital because I thought they had us mixed up with somebody else. Um, but no, uh, there was a cardiologist who came to talk to us. Apparently, while Aiden was down in the ER and they listened to his chest with a stethoscope, um, they heard a heart murmur. So they wanted to also do an EEG and an echo and run all those other tests to look into the heart. Um, <clears throat> my problem was with Aiden having had staph infection we were constantly going to the doctor's office because they were having us come in like every two days to check on it and you know prescribing us cream and everything and they listened to his heart every time so how did they not hear the heart murmur but 
the ER did. I'm not entirely sure. Um, there's more about that pediatrician, but we're not going to get into it now. Um, <clears throat> so, after a few days stay, <clears throat> they found nothing abnormal in his brain activity. They couldn't find a cause for that. That was neurological. Um but they did find that he had a heart defect. He had two holes in his heart. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, they were like, in most cases, it closes on its own, but he needs to be on medication. And he was pretty much in congestive heart failure at that point. I have since heard that when heart issues happen with children, um, like if they have a heart attack, it can sometimes present as a seizure is what it looks like. So I don't know if that's what happened to Aiden or not. No one ever explained the seizure to us, but <clears throat> he had a heart defect. Um, we were in and out of the doctor's office and the hospital for the first five months of his life. He was in and out of congestive heart failure. Um, and they'd up his dose and then send us back home and he'd go into congestive heart failure again and they'd up his dose and all this time like the excess fluid was just building up i'm trying to find the symbol because some of them are hard to see on here seven four three okay um <clears throat> so you know, the fluid started backing up into his lungs and more medicine, send us home. And then he'd start showing signs again. Um, there was one point where he would not eat at all. And going back to the eating and how, why we struggled with breastfeeding, it turns out because he had that heart defect that his body was just so exhausted from maintaining a heartbeat and trying to breathe that trying to latch on and eat from the breast was too much work for him and it just completely depleted and exhausted him he just couldn't do it um and by then like i said it was nine days later and it was too late to do anything i'm dropping drills everywhere um so yeah um he wasn't eating at one point and I was having to use the syringe, like the one ml syringe from his medication to draw up formula to try to get something in him. Um, at that same time, I had called the pediatrician and said, you know, my son has a heart defect. His cardiologist's office is two hours away. Um, they're going to want to know like how much he weighs if he's lost any weight is there any way that i could bring him in just to get weighed like we don't need a checkup because we're waiting on the cardiologist i just need to get him on a scale to find out if he's lost any weight and they said well you know you'd have to make an appointment for that and we don't have any appointments available until next week at that point pediatrician was changed because i'm like i will take him in the room I will put him on the scale. I will do it myself. I will sanitize the scale after we're done. I just need to get a weight so I so they know whether we need to come immediately or if it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we changed and they did have us go up to be checked um, and he was admitted. We had a different doctor because we had had two different cardiologists within the same practice that we saw and we loved both of them they were both amazing um but they neither one of them were on call when we went out that time so it was another doctor and he came in to talk to us and i distinctly remember i was going to ask him because aiden at this point was like three or four months old he weighed 12 pounds like he had weighed 12 pounds for a month, not did not gain an ounce. And I was going to ask, you know, if he continues not to gain any weight, does that mean he's going to have to have 
open heart surgery because um, they were waiting it out and seeing if the hole would close on its own and they kept saying they wanted to wait until he was stronger if he was gonna have to have surgery and I'm like well you know at this point if he's not gaining any weight he's not getting stronger he's getting weaker so if he continues to not gain weight is that a sign that he's going to have to have surgery the doctor cut me off before I even got to ask my question and he said I know what you're gonna ask and no your son or your child is not going to die but if he catches so much as a cold, it'll turn into pneumonia and then he'll die. And that kind of freaked me out because the last thing I wanted to think about was him dying. Um, actually, when he was in the hospital the first time when we found out about his heart defect, when I was pregnant, I was used to sing You Are My Sunshine to him, which I'm not going to sing now because you've heard my singing before. I'm going to spare you because Matt's not in the room and it's not as fun to sing <laughs> and make him crazy. Um... But I used to sing You Are My Sunshine. And I remember singing it to him while he was in the hospital the first time. After we learned about the heart defect. And when I got to the part of please don't take my sunshine away. I completely lost it. I couldn't sing that song anymore. I ended up having to change the lyrics to it. So instead of please don't take my sunshine away. Because I couldn't even bear the thought of that. It became my love for you grows more and more each day um so yeah that kind of like completely blew me away when the doctor's like if he catches a cold he'll die um so yeah thankfully we never had to see that doctor again but again they changed his medication um sent us home at one point i got a letter from cobra for my health insurance which I don't think Matt's job offered health insurance at the time or his wasn't as good as mine so we had insurance through my job and since I wasn't working because my son had health issue and I was on FMLA um, Cobra sent a letter and they're like hey you need to go back to work or your insurance rates are gonna go up to this which was like over two thousand dollars a month it was more than I made working so I had to go back to work while my son was still sick. Um, he stayed at my mom's <clears throat> and I was working overnight. So he would stay with her at night and then during the day um, I would go take a nap and then I'd go to my mom's house and spend time with him before I had to go back to work the next day. Um, so one time I was over there and she had left and I was holding Ian and and he started doing this like <laughs> gasping thing and his body was shaking. Not quite like the seizure, but his body like tremored. Um, and I'm like, that's not good. I've never seen him do that before. Let's call the cardiologist. So I call the cardiologist and they're like, yeah, you need to bring him in. Um, so call my mom and let her know. And she's like, oh yeah, he's done that with me a few times before. And I was like, no, that's not good. That's not good. And she's like, well, you said like when he sleeps, sometimes he shakes a little bit because Matt does that. When he's asleep, he'll just do like a little jolt. And Aiden does it too. And I'm like, yeah, but this was different than that. Like this involved his breathing. Like he couldn't catch his breath. Um, so we brought him back up to the hospital and... At that point, they had already decided that he was going to have surgery, but it was scheduled for like a month later um, because the fluid was starting to build up into his kidneys. So we saw at that appointment, we saw another doctor at the practice, um, not the one with horrible bedside manner. Um, and he said that it was back, the fluid was backing up into Aiden's kidneys and um now it's starting to get a little bit dangerous because if the fluid's backing up into too many organs, it can cause organ shutdown. And once one of them shuts down, then they all start to shut down. Um, so they decided that we needed to do surgery. So it was like a month later where he was going to have surgery. Um, but then that whole breathing thing happened. So we went up and went to the doctor's office, which is right across the street from the hospital. And they're like, well, we have... A couple options you can either one wait until his surgery 
or two, we can have you admitted into the hospital and hope that that will push the surgeon to be able to do the surgery earlier. So we decided to have Aiden admitted. Um, he was there for a week before they were able to do the surgery. They did the surgery and everything went well. Um, as far as we know, anyway. He had the surgery. It was October 24th. It was like two days before his five month anniversary, his five month birthday. Um, and it was on October 24th. He was in the CVICU for a few days. We were released within a, the week. And on Halloween, he was in his little monkey costume and we took him out trick-or-treating. Um, and he was on nothing but Tylenol. Immediately after the surgery wasn't so great. Um, the pain medicine that they had given him and the CVICU is just one small room lined with a bunch of beds. There's no room for the parents to stay there like overnight. So unfortunately we couldn't stay with him. But I remember calling in the morning to check on him before we came in, see how his night had went. And they said that he was in a lot of pain. The medications weren't working. He had pulled out his central line. Um, he just did not do well. And I remember being in there with him and there was a little boy that was about three maybe um in the bed next to him with his mom and the little boy looked at his mom and he's like mommy hold me and she's like I can't you have all those tubes um we can't move you too much and that broke my heart like it was hard seeing my son this tiny little baby um in that condition I keep saying um a lot I'm so sorry it was hard seeing like my tiny little man in that condition but hearing them like ask for you to hold them and not being able to like that would kill me like I was so grateful he couldn't talk because I don't know if I could have handled it um so yeah he had the surgery a week later, we were trick-or-treating. He has been completely fine in that regard ever since. Um, we actually went to a checkup here in where we live now when he was 10. And the doctor was like, honestly, if I hadn't seen the scar on his chest, like you wouldn't even be able to tell that he had open heart surgery. Thankfully, the surgery is one of the most common ones that they have to do and the easiest to do. So when there's holes in the heart, they will, it's kind of like a pool patch. They'll place a patch on the hole and then the heart will grow tissue over it and cover that patch. So he's like, yeah, if I hadn't seen the scar in his chest and, you know, the wire, because he had wire, they had to wire his ribs back together after surgery. Um, like, I never would have known that he had... A, heart surgery well, the, that's how good his heart looks so everything is fine in that regards but that wasn't the end of our issues um, however this video is taking very long so I think I'm gonna cut it for tonight there will be a part two um, and we should be able to get it all covered in that part two so thank you guys if you stayed here until the end um, if you have any thoughts or comments, if they're negative, please keep them to yourself. But if you have any thoughts or comments, please drop them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for listening. Love you. Bye.